on January 2nd, 2016, at around 2 in the morning. My wife and I were driving along the Skyline Drive in the easternmost part of Douglas County, Colorado. We were pretty much the only car on the road with only a handful of cars coming towards us. We had just come around a bend in the road, and as the road begins along ascent up the mountainside, we got to about a thousand feet up the road, and we seen this large creature stepping up from the tree line and walking around. It was a few seconds for it to get to the tree line to tree line as it moved quickly across the road, disappearing into the opposite tree line. It's hard to describe in words, really, but it looked to be about nine feet tall and had a very large snout. Also had a very broad chest and very broad shoulders. I also saw black spines sticking out the back and the back part of its head. It was very dark and black, but the road was well lit from the lights on our car and headlights. We were in such shock for a few moments. We did not say anything to each other for several minutes. I can tell you one thing. I am most certain it was not a bear or a moose or any known animal native to this area. We've been living in this area for years now and often and frequently go hiking in the mountains. We can see moose sometimes, if we're lucky, but this was something else entirely. It was far too large to be human. I'm six feet tall, and I don't come close to this thing. I also don't think it was Bigfoot either, because the snout and the sharp spines on its back and head did not make any sense. It also was not canine either. It was so strange-looking, and it happened quickly. We actually live right next to the Pike National Forest where we go hiking, at least three days a week. And after this encounter, we're a bit nervous about our future hikes. I've told close friends and family about this encounter, and the majority are very skeptical, simply thinking that it's a misidentification, but I don't know about you. I don't know a single animal or creature on God's green earth that resembles what we saw. I've had a few ideas of what it can be, but I'm not sure. It was all black and very hairy and extremely tall. My wife and I will never be able to forget it, and we are glad we can share this with other people. After researching some more online, I ran into your YouTube channel, and I wanted to share this with you. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. I am a huge fan of your YouTube channel and your work and have also been intensely interested in the field of cryptozoology since I was a child. Now, I'm a middle-aged man with a career and a family who has become increasingly afraid of making a wrong turn into the woods in my home state of Wisconsin. In particular, of all the national forest, check a Megan National Forest. I have been in the woods hundreds of times and find it very necessary to do a lot of hiking to keep up with shape usually also with my sister. We are both very experienced in the outdoors and are in excellent physical shape, primarily due to all the hiking. However, two years ago, something happened that caused me to be very cautious in the woods of northern Wisconsin. The first time I entered these woods was at a very young child, and I remember being fond of the dense trees and the feeling of being surrounded and feeling safe. I'm not trying to ridicule the stories and the experiences of others, only trying to convey my own. The first encounter with this thing was on a summer day, when I was sitting in the woods at a favorite spot, straining to hear the call of a pileated woodpecker. I did not see the creature at first, but I could hear something moving around, crunching on leaves and bramble. It was moving in the opposite direction from the way I had chosen to exit which was a path that I had used in the woods for years. I could hear it now, moving along the path, almost intersecting where I was sitting, but I could not see it. It was now moving away. But the disturbing thing is, is that I could hear it moving on two feet. That will always haunt me. It was not a person, because it had a terrible stench, and I know homeless people can stink, but this was this animalistic stink that a wild animal would have. It also sounded very, very heavy. As a police officer, I feel now that my experiences as a child completely validate the training I've had in the field. In fact, the more training I have and experience I have at hand as an officer further validates that memory. 
And then I began hearing some strange noises, almost like whispers or murmurs or grunts. Or a combination of the three, it's a very strange combination of sounds that I can't exactly identify or describe properly, because it was so foreign to me, even more so at the time. But the tone in the sound was very irritable, like whoever or whatever was making it sounded like it was angrily grumbling to itself. I'm not sure why or what. I figured that if I wanted to get out of here, now was probably the best chance I had. So, I got up on both legs and quickly moved through the woods behind me. And then, as soon as I began going through the other trail, it started moving quickly, towards my direction. I knew for a fact now it was following me, trying to catch up to me, but trying to stay at a distance so I would not see it. That's what I believe. I moved faster, and eventually, I reached the edge of the woods and got to a smaller clearing. I looked back into the woods and on the trail and I could see something, just very faint, but moving behind the trees. It was at least maybe seven trees back. It's a very obscured in view, but I could tell that something big was back there. And whatever it was was very tall, very dark, and I knew for a fact it was watching me. If I had to estimate distance, I would say somewhere between 40 to 60 yards away, covered in dense brush and trees. And once I made it to the clearing, it stopped. It stopped breathing, it stopped making noise, and it stopped moving. I could tell that it was trying to stay concealed, which bothers me and scares me even more looking back on it, because whatever it was was following me for a reason and was purposely trying to stay hidden, like it or they did not want to be seen. Who knows what sinister plans they would have had had they got up to me, and I was all alone by myself. I quickly turned back around and ran to the other trail, which exits the woods. Since that very first time I heard it, I always feel hypersensitive any time I'm hiking in the woods. I'm going to further reiterate that I strongly feel that this was not a human being. The feeling it gave off, the odor, something was different about it. If I can describe the odor to you, it was the smell of rotting meat, blood and rotting meat specifically. But after I had ran back in the other direction, fully exiting the woods for good this time, it did not follow me any further. I almost wonder if it's because it did not want to reveal itself by going into the clearing. God only knows what it could have been. When I was 18, I had just graduated high school and decided to go on a four-day camping trip with my closest friends. I picked up a campsite in the Central Cascade Mountains here in Washington State. I was not familiar with our location, but it was the mountains and a very dense forest. The closest road was miles away. My closest friends and I were about a quarter mile down the campsite, but had no cell phone service. There was also no light pollution, and you could see the stars. The visibility was perfect, a couple of hundred yards in every direction, coupled with the moonlight. At around four in the morning, I woke up to some noise right outside. Quickly grabbing my flashlight, walking to the tent door, I immediately noticed how unusually still everything seemed. I looked up at the sky, and the stars were moving. I felt like I was falling, and my equilibrium was all off. I thought I was still daydreaming, and just walked back into my tent. My friends were sleeping in my truck, so it was really quiet. For starters, two of them would rather sleep in the truck than in a tent. I'm not sure why, but that's what they chose. So then I heard some scuffling and some moving around. It sounded slow, like a shuffled walk, and the footsteps seemed close by. Now, I was beginning to panic because, as far as I know, nobody else was around. We had all camped together that night. I decided to go into the middle of the campsite, turning my light towards my truck which was parked about 100 feet away. What I saw then was indescribable. Coming towards the truck was a tall humanoid. It was dark and slim like a living shadow. This was the reason of the scuffling noise that I was hearing. I'll never forget the way it moved. It's like its body was fluid, like water, and moved in perfect sync. Its skin was a shiny black, not dense. It had an almost shine to its body. It was also very tall, 
with a head that was pointed, unlike ours that are rounded, and no visible eyes that I could see, although you could only see the outline, but it was very, very tall. Easily well over eight feet. I'm six two, very skinny, and this had me beat. The neck of this thing was also long. While it was not looking in my direction, I could feel it looking at me. Its movements were very fluid and graceful. It almost kind of had a slither to it. I couldn't really make out hands, but I could see these long, almost finger-like appendages that protruded from its arms. And while its face had no features because it was solid black, it had no nose or mouth that I could see, but I felt like it was smiling at me the entire time. Without wasting a second, I retreated back into my tent, crawling inside and never falling back asleep. I think I stayed up, gripping my knife till about six in the morning, just as the sun was rising. I swear I could hear this thing walking around with the leaves and sticks rustling and snapping. The footsteps just stopped again, and I knew this thing had been stalking our tent and campsite all night long, off and on, like it was looking for something. What? I'm not sure. I must have fell asleep out of exhaustion, because right around 8 a.m. I woke up, and everybody was still asleep. I went out and started a fire, very eerie to even be around and how quiet it was. Normally, at this early in the morning, the birds should be up and chirping. The sun was out and the sky was clear. But yet, everything around me felt ominous and creepy, like there was something lurking still in the woods. I looked around but did not see any trace of that shadow that I saw, but I could feel it was around. I knew I was being watched by something. My gut told me everything I needed to know. Maybe about 30 more minutes later, once I had a fire roaring, all my friends began to stir. They could tell I did not look too good. After having about two hours of rough sleep, I was exhausted and terrified. I vaguely told them my experiences of the night prior. They kind of laughed at me but did not really believe me. This is really the only paranormal experience I've ever had and it scared me silly. I'm not sure how to process what's happened to me or where do I go from here. I've never felt this afraid before. Once I was able to convince my friends to move campsites, we did and, thankfully, had no other experiences with this human shadow thing. Now, fast forward to about a year later, and I'm talking to a completely different friend than the group of friends that I went on with this camping trip, and I'm telling him about my story, and he actually tells me that there are many sightings and stories of what people refer to as shadow people, or also commonly known as the shadow man in the same area near the same section of mountains. I'm curious if you've ever heard of this before, and can you tell me if it's a demon, a ghost, am I seeing a creature? What exactly did I encounter, and what did it want with me? My fear is that it was stalking me to try and hurt me, or take something from me. I'm just glad I avoided it, and it never bothered me anymore. Thanks. While camping in the hatch unit of the White Mountain National Forest, we were awakened at about 4.30 a.m. by a loud, thunderous scream that resembled the screaming given. We were two male campers. Moments later, we heard something very large crashing through the woods. It sounded like a freaking bulldozer, followed by two loud crashes that sounded like thunder crashing down into the forest floor as something big came right near our area. We were only equipped with two small flashlights and shining it in the direction of the crashing, but we saw nothing. My friend very faintly recalls the trees violently shaking in the back, but could not really see it due to the lighting. The noises and crashes continued on for several minutes. Whatever it was was very big and moving very violently through the woods. It sounded like it was coming parallel, from our northwest heading down south maybe no more than 40 yards away from us. At that point, we'd both decided we had had enough and decided to leave camp early. We got up, quickly got our tent undone and grabbed everything we could and left at about 5.30 a.m. At the time, the sun was just beginning to rise and we got a good look at our camp area. We saw no evidence of any more crashing or any trees moving violently. 
We decided to return later that day, but we found nothing, nothing out of place and no sign of any unusual activity. However, we searched a bit further, and we found some trees that were uprooted and ripped apart, branches torn down, small cedar trees, completely broken. Something big clearly came through here, and FYI, we were at least three and a half miles out from the nearest hiking trail. So my question for you is who would be out here in the middle of the woods, in the middle of the night, that large, enough to make that much damage? My friend and I saw this and the hair on the backs of our neck stood up. We eventually settled and ended up camping at the edge of a very small pond near the base of a mountain. The mountains surrounding the area are also covered in dense forest. I have traveled myself and camped all throughout the northeastern section of this area for many years. While I've heard some strange sounds and calls, I've never had an experience quite like this one, and have never experienced anything like this again. I should also say that before this, I had no strange feelings of being watched, premonition, smelling anything out of the ordinary, either did my friend who was with me. It was just the thunderous crashing noise, all of a sudden, that moved right by our campsite and then off in the distance and disappeared. The whole thing lasting, maybe a few moments. The sounds were big and very loud. Hiking in the Adirondacks around Tupper Lake in the autumn of 2016. My girlfriend and I were hiking in between Snowshoe Lake and the Garden. We had hiked for about four miles into the northern part of the Adirondacks. We found an open area where there were large human tracks clearly imprinted in the ground. Now, these tracks were far different than some straggler. They were easily double the size of my feet, and I'm a size 13. Something was out here with a massive feet, and the indent in the dirt below was quite incredible. Whatever made these was not only large, but had to weigh a considerable amount. As we were inspecting these tracks, I became aware of some very strange sounds I could not properly identify. To me, it sounded like a woodpecker, but on a crack. I thought that that was impossible, due to the time of day, and I was under the impression that woodpeckers are only out at certain times of day. I asked my girl if she heard the sound and what it was. She, too, had no idea like me. We had continued to hear the sound off and on. I began to stop and listen much more, and I could hear the sound of faint human voices in the distance kind of murmuring to each other. Evidently, the owners of these voices were getting progressively more aggressive, and the tone was changing drastically, along with some strange grunting noises, and also heavy breathing. I told my girlfriend that we should probably get away from here, that I no longer felt safe, and that we might potentially be in danger. I don't want to be in the middle of any kind of confrontation. I mean, I'm a big guy. 6'3", 265 pounds, and military trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but I usually don't be afraid like this. Because normally, I'm not afraid of a fight. I've also hiked in the woods for the majority of my life, and the only thing that really scares me are bears. But this, I just had a bad feeling. These sounds were so weird and unnatural, it really freaked me out. I wanted to be as far away from them as humanly possible. We were heading back towards the trailhead through the dense woods. And as we were heading back to the trailhead, I found yet another set of tracks that were just as large as the other ones that I saw. I took a picture with my phone and sent it to a good friend of mine who works in the forest service. He told me it is very similar to a few prints he's found multiple times and tells me it looks like there might be a Sasquatch in the area. And normally, I'm not afraid of anything on the face of this earth. But those voices and the sounds in the woods that night really got inside my head. I don't have any explanation for what they were. This was so different. I felt like I was being watched and on edge the entire time. Like I was intruding on something I should not have been a part of. I felt like that since that night. I still go hiking in the woods from time to time, but I don't always feel the safest. And sometimes... That lingering emotion of feeling watched still is there. The only thing I could really explain is that if it were people, 
It could have been due to a confrontation, but my gut tells me that humans were not responsible for these noises. When I got a chance to speak to my friend Moore, whom I'll refer to as Roger, who works for the Forest Service, claimed that it might be two Sasquatches bickering or arguing. I don't know if they even did that, but the sounds they made sure sounded like it. I wanted to tell you about one of my more recent encounters. I love your show, and have listened to nearly all of them. Anyway, I had an encounter at my camp all the way back in the fall of 2003. I also lived near the Adirondacks of New York. I was 20 years old at the time, and I've been going to the wilderness of the Adirondacks since I was 10. I've been camping every weekend and every other summer for my entire life. I know what every animal, bird, a frog, etc. in the woods sounds like. I also have to add that my father is a wildlife biologist and has a PhD in biology and has been doing research on the wildlife for well over 30 years. I had my encounter about a mile and a half away from another sighting that happened back in 2001 of an all-black beast that was spotted. I was camping with my friends and we were doing the usual playing card games, telling ghost stories and laughing, and joking around. No drugs or alcohol, though. Around midnight, we were feeling drowsy enough, with all the adrenaline and excitement running out from the day. We decided to call it a night. We had a fire going, and we put out the fire with a bucket of water. Not dirt, though, because dirt always doesn't do the best, and the embers can still flare up. But this night, it actually rained hard, so... Maybe we didn't necessarily need the bucket of water. It soaked literally everything. We had three tents. I was in the middle with two people on either side of me. I was in the back of the tent facing the opening. The moon was out, but it was only at about 15% of its full, so there was little to no light from the sky. About three or so hours into my sleep, I heard trees snapping near my tent. Then another one behind me. Then, a much larger snap, a good five to ten feet away. My eyes shot open, and I looked around. My friends were asleep, of course, the joys of being the lightest sleeper of the group. I could make out something standing in front of our tent. I could not make out any details, because the moonlight was so dim, and there were no external sources of light due to the rain. But there was just enough that I could make out a faint silhouette. I thought it was a person, but it was maybe 6'3 or 6'4. As I tried to observe more for details and let my eyes adjust to the darkness, I could hear it taking a step to the left. I knew I had to see it, so I slowly looked to the left, pulling back my sleeping sack. Don't get me wrong, I was absolutely terrified and shaking, but my curiosity got the best of me. I had to see what kind of axe-wielding murderer was going to slaughter us. So I slowly lift up the tent flap to see who our assailant was. And what I saw made my hair stand up. I could see its entire body and I realized what I was looking at was not human. I cannot explain it because it was unlike any animal I've ever seen before. It had to weigh easily over 300 pounds and it had massive arms. No neck and a large snout with a body built like a football player. Its head reminded me somewhat of a goat, but not, and I could not tell if I could see any horns. It was really strange and bizarre. The snout looked far more like a deer than anything else. It also had massive, rippling legs. The entire body of it looked like a brute. I was so terrified by this that I slowly let the flap fall down and went back into my sleeping bag, huddled into a ball, and awaited the end. I knew there was nothing I could do. I also did not bring any weapons with me, which was very stupid. I could hear it outside the tent, sniffing, like a large dog would. And I don't know if something must have spooked it or what, because all of a sudden, I heard it take off running, crashing into the brush right near our tent. It made a lot of noise, and it reminded me if somebody shut off the highway at 40 miles an hour right into the trees. It was that loud, and after it disappeared, the night around us was silent. When I went to bed, the crickets were faintly chirping, and the night had a cool breeze, but now 
everything was so still, you could hear every breath, even though you're trying to hold it in. You could hear your heart pounding in your ears. I still felt like it was around. I never ended up telling anybody about this, and my friends had no idea. Although, in the morning, one of them made a comment about an odor that was in the air. It smelled like rotting meat and feces. I think we all made jokes for a while that it was probably a homeless camp nearby. After that, though, I never spoke a word of it to my family, until years and years later, when my dad told me about his own Bigfoot sighting up in the Adirondacks. That's when we got to talking about the skunk ape, and I opened up and told him about my experience. He was perplexed, and had me explain the details that I told you. He explained that it did not sound like a Bigfoot to him, judging by the large head that was similar to that of a goat in shape and a long snout like a deer, which now I'm even more confused at what I experienced. So this is one of the reasons I'm wanting to write into you is for clarity on what I saw and what I experienced that night. Clearly, this was something hiding in the woods, potentially the same beast that was sighted back in 2001. I know this sounds absolutely crazy, but I'm pretty sure that my wife and I encountered werewolf-like creatures in the North Bay area of California just a few years back. In September of 2013, my wife and I were heading back home to Napa, California on I-80, eastbound, just after midnight. It was maybe around 12.30 when we approached the Sierra Nevadas on the east side of Lake Tahoe. We were cruising at around 70 miles an hour on the highway. I always keep my eyes on the road, but my wife was pretty tired and was sitting there with her eyes closed, resting her head against the window. When I glanced at my passenger side view, movement to the side caught my attention, and as I gazed out into the night, a very large black figure running along the side of the road got my attention. I was stunned, as we're not really used to seeing wildlife around here. It was even more surprising to see something so large moving so quickly. As I stared at it, while also trying to navigate the road in front of me and my wife still sleeping, I hit my brights to see if the frontal view would help give me any extra light to see this thing as it was running past my vehicle. It did, actually. I did get some extra light and could make some details. It was a massive black thing. The skin was charcoal black, covered in hair. I'm guessing easily more than 500 pounds due to its size and how bulky it was. And from what details I could make out, it most certainly reminded me of a werewolf. I was in complete shock and awe, and I wasn't sure if I should slow down or speed up. And I think out of reaction, I just slammed on the gas pedal, which ended up waking up my wife, and she kept looking at me puzzled, asking me what was wrong. I told her not to look out the window, but she looked out anyway because if you tell somebody not to do something, what is your number one reaction? You're going to do it. She looked but did not see anything, so I don't know if she believed me. But what I know was not a bear or a coyote or definitely any other animal. While I can't confidently say it was a werewolf, it sure as hell resembled one. And I don't know what kind of wolves or canines we have that are native to California. But if they are anything like what I saw that night, count me out. I will never go into the woods again. I have been aware of your work for some time now and I very recently shared my encounter with a family of Bigfoot with some researchers who suggested I should contact you with the details. This encounter happened about 30 years ago. I was in the U.S. Army, stationed at Fort Lewis in Washington State. The base had a robust training program, and therefore much of the base was closed to the public, and you also had to have valid military ID to even enter. The area I was in was off-limits to the public, just restricted to military personnel. We were out in the field on training exercises. I was a driver of a deuce and a half, which is a two and a half ton truck. The area we were driving through was comprised of dense timber and deep creeks and logging roads. The road we were on was a dirt road with a hill on one side. The other side featured a deep ravine. The area was dark and the forest was dense. 
we were in the back of the truck, and I was trying to see ahead to make sure we did not go off the road or drive into a hole and get stuck. After all, there were a lot of large potholes on this road. At first, I thought the driver was joking, but he explained that he had seen a Bigfoot, and he said, watch out. So I scanned the area ahead of us, but did not see anything. And then all of a sudden, standing right near the wood line, right by the road, was this large creature. Then it quickly moved to the middle of the road, and that's when I got a good look at it, because the headlights illuminated it. It was huge, well over eight feet tall and wide. The head was kind of cone-shaped, and the face was very flat. The arms were large, though, and were probably the largest and longest part of the animal. I could not see any features of the face because it moved so fast, but it just stood there in the middle of the road, as if waiting for us, maybe anticipating, and more of its features became visible. I could see now that hair was all over its face, and its eyes were this ominous glowing yellow. And very quickly, or all at once, our driver slammed on his brakes, and the truck went about a fourth of the way up to the creature. And like out of an action movie, this thing suddenly leapt up and jumped up onto the roof of our car. Banging and making huge dents in the metal, whatever it was was pissed. I'm just assuming it was a Bigfoot. I really have no idea. All of us were scared crapless, and this thing was holding onto the vehicle as our driver sped off while flooring it, not even being mindful if he tipped the entire vehicle over. As this is going on, I could hear parts of the roofing of the vehicle being torn off and this thing groaning and growling. I wish I could tell you how long this went on for, maybe 20 to 30 seconds, but it felt like 10 minutes. Our driver made a very sharp turn around a bend in the road that was so sharp and so fast that we almost tipped over ourselves, but it threw this creature off. And we were all so scared and freaking out, the one guy opened up the back and began firing into the woods. Afterwards, the driver of the truck was so shaken up from what had happened, he quit driving. We were all very reprimanded for what we saw and being told not to speak about it to anybody. Since my time, as terrifying as this was, I've become sort of a Bigfoot enthusiast because I believe that that's what I encountered that day. I've been to many Bigfoot events and have met many people and have heard all sorts of sightings and encounters. And all this time, I just thought Bigfoot was mere folklore or a legend. But come to find out, he is very, very real. I am no longer skeptical at all and I'm very cautious when I'm in the woods, especially alone. Oh, and when I was a child, maybe I'll write this in a separate email, I had a sighting of what I believe you would call a winged humanoid, although the details are kind of fuzzy and I don't really remember it as well as this Bigfoot experience. I've also, growing up, have had experiences with shadow people. I don't know if there's any connection between the three creatures, but I do find it interesting. I am just a simple soldier, and I don't know what to make of these encounters myself. I wanted to reach out to you and let you know about an experience that I had with my girlfriend in August of 2017. We were in West Virginia, and we took a trip here in the Canaan Valley. I grew up in the woods of West Virginia, as my family has a cabin there, and I've been going out there since I was a little boy. I'm very familiar and well-versed in the woods. We went to the Canaan Valley to stay at Canaan Valley Resort, where they have a lodge they rent. We stay there for four nights. On the second night, my girlfriend and I heard a loud, howling-like sound. I've heard this sound before, and it can only be described as what I know to be some sort of Bigfoot call. There are not many people in the area, just a few houses by the lodge. The call came from further back of the property, maybe about a hundred yards or so into the woods. It began as low frequency and then went really high. It was unlike anything I've ever heard. The next night, her and I were back at the lodge at around 11 p.m. when it began to call again. This time, I had recorded it, and it sounded exactly like the Ohio Howl, which can be found all over the internet. We looked around the cabin to see if there was anybody outside that could be somewhat responsible for the noise, but there was not. The following night, and the night after, it called exactly again, but around midnight. I had asked the other guests if they had heard the call, and they said they did, 
but they never stayed past a few days. I never felt threatened, but it was pretty unnerving. Thank goodness we were tucked in the safety of the lodge. It was strange to hear the sound, though, especially when you're not used to hearing it. I've been in this area for many, many years, and this was the first time ever hearing the noise. Keep up the good work. I believe that I had a Slenderman sighting, or some sort of Stickman sighting. I was returning from my sister's house here in Erie, Pennsylvania, via I-90 East, returning home to Crafton, Pennsylvania, 12 miles from Somerset Exit, and I noticed a figure near the road. It was tall, extremely slender, and lanky. The body even had a slight green hue to it, and the creature was standing right by a large tree. It was in a crouching position, but its knees were bent, kind of looking like Slender Man. I was shocked by the figure that I had to look away and then double take. It was still there, in the exact same position. I do not take drugs, I do not drink, nor do I take any prescription medications. There's no reason I should have hallucinated this. It was real. I had even asked a friend of mine who was with me if she was seeing what I was, and she said yes. She said it's the weirdest thing she's ever seen. We could not see where its arms were at, since they were down by its side, but we never saw its face. Maybe we did not see the Slender Man, and maybe we saw Skinwalker changing, or that was halfway between forms. Please, let me know what you think. Was this a Slender Man sighting, or is there some other explanation? I saw one of your cryptid videos recently, and it reminded me of an experience that happened to me in the woods in Camden, Delaware in the late 90s. I was young. It took place in an area behind an old and now demolished mental hospital. I was with two friends. We were just hanging out. I don't think we were doing drugs or anything like that. Not that I remember. I mean, I would occasionally hang out with these guys and smoke weed sometimes, but I can't recall if this is one of those times. Either way, I've never tripped out on weed or seen things that should not be there. So, if you're familiar with how cannabis works, these kinds of things should automatically be ruled out. But I guess the uneducated still like to use that as a possible excuse. The same way when people write you off for drinking too much. You tell me, when was the last time you saw something supernatural because you had been drinking? Thank you. But that's besides the fact. The whole thing was a very surreal experience. I remember the thing, because I don't know what else to call it, coming out of the woods and standing in front of us. It never moved. It was stoic. It did not say anything. It was also very expressionless. What it was, or what they were, was a large, hairy, wild man, or kind of like a Neanderthal. In fact, the word my friends and I used at the time was a caveman. Just a caveman that's nine feet tall and built like a linebacker. But I'll never forget the face and how distinctively human it was, with just a much more pronounced brow ridge, maybe a larger nose, and black eyes. Very short hair, too, kind of like how a chimpanzee does. It's not long at all. Not like an orangutan. Very short hair. It kind of just stepped out, and maybe it was stunned to see us there. Maybe it was shocked because it was not expecting us. I don't know. I've played in these woods a lot growing up, and I never had an encounter like that before. I did not even know that wild men like this exist. And in high school, me and a different group of friends would hike around there all the time in that same area. And the only thing I could think that would be somewhat related to this event was one time when I was in high school, we found a fox with its head ripped off its body. We always thought it was strange and never found the head, but other than that, that was the only event that I could somewhat see being related as now that I'm older, and know more about Bigfoot or wild men that this seems to be a behavior that they do. And judging from some of your videos, that seems to be a commonality. But I have no way to prove or know if they are related for sure. After it stared at all three of us for maybe 20 seconds, it just casually turned around and walked back into the woods, as if completely unamused, not running away or trying to get away, just more of a, oh, you, and then walking away. And while all three of us were quite shocked, I don't think any of us were really scared or terrified, more just completely shocked and confused at what had just happened. And I think for a while afterwards, 
we all tried convincing ourselves that we had just seen a mutated bear or something. But as I got older and the internet became much more prevalent, I was able to educate myself and that's why I believe that it is a Bigfoot. And now I'm 47. And before I go, there is one area I did want to tell you about that specifically has this large dead tree that many people refer to as Devil's Tree. It's in a large clearing around the woods here. And there just seems to be a very strange energy surrounding the entire clearing. Also, on this tree are massive claw marks. And no, not from a bear. I've seen the marks that bears make on trees and how high they do it. The claw marks on this start out at about 10 feet up and go all the way down. They are very wide and very deep, and they appear more canine than anything else. I'm not sure if Bigfoot made these or not, or what they are from. But again, there's that very strange mystical aura or energy surrounding the entire clearing, which just has the sole tree in it. The entire clearing is maybe 100 feet, and it just feels very strange. It's only about 3 or 4 miles away from where I had my original sighting with this, what I assume, Bigfoot. If you'd like to chat more, feel free to go ahead and reply to this, and I'll do what I can. If you decide to read this, I'll try and jump in and answer any questions your audience might have. Thank you. I was about 16 years old in 1973. My mother and father were just divorced, and I was living with my mother, who had recently just remarried to a man who owned a cabin in the woods of southern Michigan. I had already been to this cabin several times by now, but this particular time was during the summer. It was very hot and very humid. It was August. I had been in the cabin when I was staying along with my younger sister, stepfather, and mother's new husband's daughter. The girls and I had been outside, playing. It was well after dinner time, and my little sister and I had asked our mother's new husband if we could take a walk into the forest, which was on the adjacent property, on the other side of the road that ran in front of the cabins. He said yes, but not to go too far. I never really understood how far that was until that day. We had walked into the woods for a good amount of time, and I was so angry with my sister for lingering and stalling and lagging that eventually I just began walking back. I had gone a good ways anyway, and I could no longer see her. I kept walking and found a small creek. I decided to follow it, still thinking that I was on my mother's property, but now thinking that I was on her neighbor's. I continued walking and had no idea where I was. There were no lights, and it seemed like blackness was all around me, and the sun was beginning to set even more and more. Dusk was taking over. And now, it being young and fragile, I was very, very scared. I did not want to call for my sister for fear she would think I was lost. I finally stopped, deciding to sit down, and just wait for her, or for the sun to rise, which we all know is going to be at least twelve hours. So I sat and waited, but it was now getting colder and colder, covered in the woods and no sunlight. I was sitting near a tree and noticed something moving behind. I could not see what it was immediately. Thinking it might be a deer or something, I decided against trying to look for some reason that I don't remember. I eventually realized that I was now shivering. I was so scared. I really have no idea how far I'd walked and did not know if I'd be able to find my way back to my mother's cabin. I was also scared of being lost in the dark woods and don't know if wild animals were roaming around, like bears and whatnot. It was then that I smelled something that I'll never forget. It was a horrible stench, like nothing I've smelled before. I felt like something was staring at me, staring daggers into me. I was afraid to look, and I just sat there, frozen in place, now shaking and trembling, I was so scared. And then I heard the most horrible screeching sound. It sounded like if you held down a cat and cut its tail off with a butcher knife. Only it was uglier, and deeper, and much worse. And along with the screeching, the smell got stronger. I decided I need to get out and away from there as far as possible, from whatever monster or animal this was, or else I was going to pass out. I started to run and suddenly bumped my head on something. I was dazed. It was then that this thing that was behind the tree grabbed me, pulled me behind it and out of the way. While I don't remember much about what exactly grabbed me, 
I remember it was this large, scaly arm with huge claws on it. And as soon as it grabbed me and picked me up, I can vaguely remember the face, looking like a giant human snake with yellow eyes. I was so scared that I just lost consciousness. The next thing I remember is waking up in the cabin after having spent several hours at the hospital in town. I was told I had passed out from exhaustion and that I was lucky to have been found. My stepfather asked me if I knew where I'd walk to. I was too afraid to tell him that I'd been terrified and lost. He laughed and said that I'd walked over a mile into the woods. I've never forgotten that smell or the sound. I've been afraid of the dark ever since that night, and I've never gone back to that cabin. I've never been back into those woods around there. I eventually married myself and had my own children. And in fact, my ex-husband and I used to go for long walks in the woods, but I never told him about this. He too was an outdoorsman, a hunter, and was very familiar with the woods. And not once did I ever feel appropriate for me to mention anything that would have made me out to be a liar, because I'm sure he would not have believed me. I had an encounter on July 24th, 2018. I was in the deep woods in northeastern Ohio. I was walking with a friend from dusk until about 11 p.m. My family had some land in the northeast that is about an hour drive out into the countryside. There were two occasions during the walk where I had heard what sounded like a large tree limb or branch breaking off, but I could not see anything because it happened beyond the trail that we were walking. But I thought it was odd, but I did not think anything of it other than nature itself at the time. We walked into a clearing that was about a half-mile hike in, and we were in there for about 30 minutes. It was also surrounded by woods on three sides and often a field. There's a lone house that appeared to be abandoned. It was a little chillier that night, but there was a full moon, and we were able to see everything around us very clearly. We were sitting on the ground, facing away from the trail and facing the woods, when we had heard what sounded like a large branch breaking off the tree, followed by a loud yell or scream coming from that same area that we had just come out of. It sounded pissed, and my friend and I both heard it immediately, grabbing our stuff and began to run back to our car. When we got back, we just threw all of our stuff inside. I turned the car around and had gotten no more than 50 yards past where we were sitting when we heard yet another loud yell or scream. It was coming from the side of the road, near the abandoned house this time. It sounded angrier and louder than the first one. The hair on the back of my neck stood straight up. We got out of there pretty quickly. The only thing I can imagine is that we had walked through its territory, and it did not like that. I have been back to the area since then, and I confidently wear my 357 now, every time and any time I go out there. I have an interesting experience from when I was a kid in the 70s here in the deep woods of Arkansas. Pope County specifically. I was out hiking in a swampy area and I was surprised by a large black creature that had run away from me. I saw the back of it. It was hunched over, about eight feet tall, and was more bipedal than it was quadrupedal. I saw a large head and a snout, but that's it. That's all I saw. I did not get any subsequent glimpses of this creature, but I know for a fact it was not a bear. I've never experienced fear of that being since it was running away and not attacking. i seen it from the back, and my only recollection is the hair was black and matted, and the head was not much higher than the shoulders. It reminded me of a mix of a monkey and a canine, but bigger. It was extremely fast, faster than any animal I've ever seen. At the time, I was only 10 years old and it was a couple of years later before I started going back into the woods regularly again. I've been out in the woods my whole life and know what animals look like. I've had other animal encounters like bobcats, mountain lions, bears, coyotes, and this was neither one of them. But I'm really at a loss for what this could have been. I always wondered if there was more to this encounter, like maybe the creature was spooked by my presence, but once it was gone, I just got the feeling that everything was okay and that I had no fear. I also did not notice anything out of place or feel anything that I should not or smell anything.
So I wanted to ask you, did I encounter a Bigfoot, or was this something else entirely? Thank you for reading. Here's an account of an experience that my mom has been having. Here's what she told me. Lately, I've been having strange encounters in the forest. I lived in Salisbury, North Carolina all my life, and I've been going to the same woods my whole life. I have noticed this past year, I've seen a lot of wildlife around, and have never seen before, and it could be from all the storms that have been in our area this past year. I've seen a black fox that would come out at night, and I've seen white deer, bears and coyotes and raccoons. Anyway, I was riding my four-wheeler through our property back in the woods. I was about to turn around and head back when I see two big yellow eyes staring at me. I slow down, begin to back up when I heard a low growl. I told my daughter to get on her bike and head towards the truck. I was going to get on my four-wheeler and head back to the truck myself. She was about halfway there, so I took off. Then, I began to hear a crashing sound behind me. Then I heard the sound of something big running. I looked back and seen the two yellow eyes. I sped up again and began to pray out loud. I got to the back road and began to look back when I see this big black thing running up behind me. I kept telling myself, it can't be what I think it is. I know for a fact it was not a bear, because I have two bears that come onto my property and I leave food out for them. When I got to the truck, I run off my four-wheeler, went around to the driver's side door, got my daughter in the truck, and when I looked back, it was right there behind the trees, staying hidden from view, growling. I never really got a great look at it because it was so fast. But as far as I'm concerned, it was a monster. Have you or anybody you know have any stories or sighting stories of giant hairy humanoid monsters in North Carolina? A long-time listener here and big fan. I have been working with a team recently to try and track and capture a reptilian humanoid out here in the woods of Oklahoma. We have been out here three nights in a row and have caught glimpses of something very tall and very much reptilian skinwalker-ish. The first night was just that, a glimpse. We were being chased out of the area by what sounded like a full-on pack of coyotes. The next two nights have had a little more interaction with us and this beast. We were outfitted with the entire capture gear and have been at this for a while, so we know how it is. After all, we are dealing with dark forces here. We have laid out bait trail and are waiting for this thing to come get it. I will send you info if we get anything from it. Footprints, castings, pictures, anything. I just wanted to share this with you, since so many of your stories are based out of Oklahoma. My name's Trevor, and I'm writing this from Wisconsin. I'm running to let you know of my first sighting of a reptilian. It happened to me in the early 1980s. I was living in a trailer park in southern central Wisconsin. Having come back to my home state after serving in the army in the early 1970s, I was working as a truck driver for a bakery company for several years at this point. The trailer park where I lived was in a thickly wooded area. There were also a few open fields around. It was mainly undeveloped. One evening, the owner of the trailer park and I were working outside, putting up some holiday lights and decorations. I had to go to the restroom, so I got up and from the table we had been using, went to the far end of the trailer. I then turned to go through the door when I heard a noise. I looked down and seen the strangest thing I'd ever seen. I saw a reptilian that was maybe about three feet tall, large yellow glowing eyes, and it had a very distinct look. It looked like a cross between a human being and an iguana or something. I was so surprised, I lost my presence of mind for a moment, and this thing turned and ran swiftly back into the woods, appearing very startled and shaken that I'd even seen it, like it was trying to be sly and discreet, and now that its cover was blown, it had to retreat. I stood there for a moment, trying to gather my thoughts. I then ran out of the driveway, yelled at the park owner, who was across the way, setting up a light. He came running over, asked me what was wrong. 
I was too afraid to be honest with him and tell him what I had seen. So I just told him I had stubbed my toe really bad and needed to go get some ice. I did tell him about it later on. He said that he had heard stories of people seeing Bigfoot and other strange lights in the sky, all behind the trailer park, but I don't know if he ever directly acknowledged what I saw. I never saw the little reptilian thing again, but I did hear strange sounds coming from the woods at night from time to time. Loud metal banging, industrial machinery, things like that, sometimes sonic booms. Even though there was nothing out there, it was just woods. Nobody went back there, nobody played to them. There might have been a game trail back there or two, but there should have been zero reason for those kinds of noises that I was hearing to be present back there at the time. I eventually moved out of that trailer park several months later, in April or May. Never heard any of the sounds again, and never had a sighting like that. I hope you are well, and that you can use my account. Take care. Trevor I'm 37, and have been a hunter and trapper all my life. Professionally, I work as a sales associate for a company in which I will not name. They're a smaller locally owned company who primarily work in insurance. I have been in the woods a lot and have seen some weird things, but this beats anything I have ever seen. Here is a very brief account of what I saw one evening about several years ago, in November of 2011. I had been hunting some flooded timber on the side of a lake when I decided to call it a night. It was about 7.40 in the evening. The sun had just set. I decided to walk back to my truck which was parked on a gravel road in the middle of a woods. I got about halfway to the road when I heard a strange noise, kind of like a dying cow, but kind of different, sounding coming off to my left, maybe no more than 50 yards from me. It sounded like it was coming from a swampy area, but I could not see it or I could not see anyone. I know for a fact that I was alone. I stopped on a dead run and something stood up from behind some brush. What did stand up did not look like a man, but it also had nothing to do with an animal that I've ever seen. I would say it was probably about 8 to 9 feet tall and stood fully erect for about 10 seconds before taking off back in the woods really fast. It could not have been an average man. It was at least 2 feet taller than me. And the face was what was most startling. It actually really reminded me of Alf. I'm not sure if you remember him or if you're too young to remember Alf but the snout was a little bit more pronounced. But everything else, besides the hair swoop, was the same. I even had my 3030 Remington with me, and it scared the heck out of me. So, I took off running once this thing took off running. I never looked back. I got back to my truck, had my rifle fully loaded, and left. I have never gone back to that section of woods, alone, since that happened. I even told a friend of mine about it, but he kind of blew me off. So, I've just never really told anybody else about it until now. That's my story. If you have any questions or need any other information, just let me know. I'm now currently living in Washington State. This was about 20-ish years ago. I was living in a very rural area near a small town of Chase City in Virginia. Not too far from the North Carolina border, actually. The incident in question happened in a far more remote area, in the middle of the night. I was on my way home from working a little late at night. I had been staying late quite frequently to finish up some things at the office, as well as stay out of the house, which was a very unhappy place for me to be. It was very dark on this particular night. I was listening to a radio station in the car, which was local here in Norfolk, probably maybe 70 miles away. I was driving along a small gravel road and was just a few miles from home. That's when I noticed a pair of red lights in the distance on the road that I was approaching. I slowed down because there were no other vehicles on the road and I did not want to have a head-on collision. I was hoping that the lights would get closer so I could see them. But the red lights were still a long way off and when I got closer, I realized that they were not on a vehicle but floating in the air. And I stopped the car. I didn't know what they were. There was only one pair, then three, and I realized they were in a circular pattern rising up and down in the woods, now flashing from red and green. 
I stopped the car completely and wondered, was there a tower in the woods with spotlights to warn of low-flying aircraft? As I sat there and watched these lights, I got a really eerie feeling, like I was not supposed to be there, and I was not supposed to be seeing this. I felt like I was being watched. I don't know how to explain it. The lights suddenly stopped at a height of probably 50 to 60 feet above the grounds in the woods. I didn't see any outlines of anything, but then I realized it was dark and there was also several vague human-like shapes coming out of the woods. My heart sank and I got the feeling things definitely weren't right. I was not supposed to be there. I slammed the car into reverse, squealed the tires, and got the car in a drive, hauling butt back to the main road, which was around a half mile away. I stopped again on the dark road, looking back, but the lights were gone. I started home the long way, and got to the house in record time. I didn't go outside for probably another week after, and did not stay out after dark for probably several years later, even going as far as changing my work shift to accommodate that. It was the summer of 2004. My brother, my cousin, and I were on a camping trip near an old farmhouse slash factory that has its own history. I had been there before with other people, so it wasn't anything new to me. The rest of our family went to go horseback riding, so the three of us decided to hang around the park with the forest, which was surprisingly deserted. I have to admit, it kind of was eerie how the park was so deserted. It was a hot summer's day, Fort Collins, Colorado, and there should have been a bunch of kids playing. But instead, it was just three, all aged between 15 to 17, as we were then. My mom had left us a cool bag with some ice cream, which had situated under a tree, out of the sun, as we didn't want the lollies to melt. I walked over to get them, as we're all quenched for thirst and needed something cold and refreshing. As I walked over to this wooded area, I had the strangest feeling I was being watched. I've heard people talking of this sensation before, but no idea what it actually felt like. I could feel eyes on me, a cold stare that was tracing me up and down, left to right. I made a 360 turn to see who or what it was. My brother and cousin could sense something was wrong, so they ran over to me. They went deathly quiet, and I knew they too felt something stare. Look, my brother said, pointing in the distance, about 30 yards away. It was the strangest thing I had ever seen in my life. At first glance, it appeared to be a bear, which was grounds enough to be petrified. But this creature was no bear. It had the shape and form of a bear, but with brown fur. It appeared to be about 12 to 15 feet tall and came about halfway of some of the trees overhead. It had what appeared to be horns, which were strange things sticking out of its head. In fact, the horns almost seemed to kind of blend into the branches. It was kind of hard to differentiate between the two. This thing stood tall. I knew if it spotted us, we would be dead. But we were terrified by seeing this thing. Thankfully, one of us was thinking straight, and my cousin grabbed me and my brother by the necks, whispering, run. As if by force, we all began running, got into the park and hid under the tire swing, at least until our parents showed up. When we told them what happened, they didn't believe us, thought we were just trying to pull a prank. But 17 years later, I know what I saw. It was real and terrifying, and I can't get that image out of my head. I never will. Believe me if you want, but there is something mysterious and terrifying that dwells deep within the forest. Maybe it's a monster, maybe it's a demon, or maybe, perhaps, it's a guardian. I don't know. This was back in September of 2007. Back then, I was 21. At the time, I lived with my two roommates at the time in a small rented house right in town. 
The place had a huge backyard and stretched out open into a field and the forest line past our fence. Now me and my friends had permission from all owners to go out there and hunt occasionally. Today, I'm a proud vegan, but back then, I didn't give two craps about any animals, so I hunted when I could. On one occasion, in September, myself and my buddy went hunting for some deer, whatever we could find. And dating apps were just new, so we wanted some cool pictures of ourselves with guns to impress the girls around here. I look back on it and I know, the thought is pretty cringy, but we were young. Whether or not we would find any deer was another issue. Even typing this sends shivers down my spine because ultimately, I recall the incident. My buddy had just went to go pee and I was sitting playing a game called Snick on my flip phone. I felt so bad with that phone. It's laughable now. My buddy was away for what seemed to be a long time, longer than it takes anybody to pee. I got worried. The next thing I heard was my buddy screaming in what sounded like agony. I ran in an effort to find him, and when I did, he was on the ground with a bloody wound on his leg. He was pointing to his right, and when I looked, I stopped dead at what was before me. It appeared to be a hyena looking like creature, with this leathery red raw dripping bits of flesh from its mouth. It was disgusting looking. Its nose and face seemed to be smashed in, but it looked wrong in every sense of the way. The creature spotted me and began to run at the speed of lightning. As if by divine intervention, I managed to grab my gun, pulling the trigger, maiming this thing in the spinal cord which jetted out of its emaciated frame. It did not die, but it bled profusely and ran. I lifted my buddy up and dragged him along the forest floor until we got home. When we told the hospital what had happened, they didn't believe us, but we thought we were just some drugged up college kids. But we both know what happened and will never forget what happened on that day back in September of 2007. Since then, I've heard of people mentioning the phrase dogmen, but I don't know. I guess I have heard some reports of hyena-like creatures that are bipedal. And I guess if I think back on it, that could have been it. But I don't know. The idea of a dogman seems crazy, but so is what we saw. I guess I'll let you be the judge on this one. It was around 10 p.m. in the evening. The day had been cloudy and rainy, and it stayed that way for most of the night. Earlier that night, me and my girlfriend at the time were playing Super Mario Sunshine on our GameCube, until we began hearing heavy rainfall outside. Because of this, the both of us decided to go for a walk in the rain. I know it sounds weird, but this was in southern Spain, and we just don't get heavy showers that often. So, we put on our raincoats and our wellies and got an umbrella. It looked quite romantic out, and it was still relatively bright as it was summer. My then-girlfriend was wearing a white rain jacket as we left our house and headed to a local park. This was surrounded by the most gorgeous woodland. What was strange was that as we were walking, moths and flies kept flocking to my girlfriend and her rain jacket and her hair. She was getting very annoyed, ready to turn back home. But luckily, I had some anti-pest spray and tried my best to help. We kept walking, and as we walked into this woodland area, we stopped under a tree. We kissed. The kiss was short-lived, however, as we both heard a yelp and a growl and witnessed something terrifying. In what appeared to be a horse, which was strange-looking, mangy and disgusting, appeared to have what looked like rotting flesh, gray and pale, and a maniacal expression. This was like a horse from hell. I know it sounds ridiculous, but how else do I even describe it? I grabbed my girlfriend, keeping her from moving, and we both stood there behind the tree, shaking. I'd actually end up biting her, and she was bleeding. 
I wondered if this crazed thing could smell the blood. I felt terrified. Eventually, this thing backed away, but I knew it was circling around us, keeping watch of us. And we witnessed that it had appeared to kill a deer, which was lying maimed and decimated on the forest floor near us. We both briskly walked back home, sincerely regretted ever leaving the house. And not long after, we both kept fighting and blaming each other for going on the walk. We couldn't cope with the horror of what we had seen and we both felt we were going crazy. We ended up going our separate ways. That was 19 years ago. I often think about the incident of Rosa and I to this day. I might try and reach out to her so we could both talk about it again. I feel we both need counseling as we witnessed something from hell. Something that destroyed our relationship and made us afraid of everything. I hope by submitting this story, I can find other people who may have witnessed similar events and experiences can maybe point me in the right direction. It is my hope that I can join some type of support group for people who have PTSD after seeing strange and terrifying creatures that society, the world, and everybody claims over and over that do not exist. At the age of 10, my family and I took a vacation down to Wilson's Creek National Battlefield in Missouri. Now, this was a pretty cool place for us. Most of the battlefield is covered by dense forest. We camped out of the park for two nights straight with very little rain. But it did start raining on our second night there. There is some light thunder and lightning. My parents were experienced at camping, so they didn't take much notice but instead told us some ghost stories from the comforts of our tent. When the storm had calmed, my parents went back to their tent, left me and my younger brother in ours. My younger brother slept soundly very quickly, but I was still freaked out by the thunder and hoped it would not start again. I guess I wasn't a camping kid as I freaked out about any deers, bugs, bears, or anything finding its way to our camping site. I could even hear a rustling sound just outside of our tent, and my blood went cold. I felt nauseous, wanting to call out for my parents, but my voice could not leave my body. So, very carefully, I unzipped the opening of our tent, just about five or so inches, and I looked out to see what was rustling outside. I still remember, 40 years later, the terror I felt when I saw what was lurking just outside. It was some type of wild dog, but most horribly, it had three heads, like a cerebrus. It was like a thing from hell. It was black and had glowing red eyes. It was terrifying. I promise this is the only thing I could think of as a cerebrus. My eyes were glued to this thing as it began walking around, sniffing. This thing was massive, and the odor of sulfur filled my nostrils. I knew this was something not right. What was striking is its face. It looked all sorts of wrong. This was no normal animal, my friends. This was something else entirely. This being did not belong on this mortal plane. I just closed my eyes and begged God to cause me to pass out. I watched this thing walk around for about a half an hour. It could have been longer. But then, I never see it leave. It just kind of disappeared. I didn't sleep a wink that night, and the sulfuric smell still filled the campsite. That didn't really dissipate for a while. When sunrise came, I was so glad to go and wake my parents. Of course, they said it was a bad dream, and the smell had dissipated by then. They told me this nightmare was childish and delusional. But 40 years ago now, 40 years, I'm confident by what I saw. At the time, I didn't know it was a cerebrus. I didn't know what it was. But as I got older, and my interest in the paranormal and cryptozoology grew and deepened, I learned more about the various kinds of creatures and demons 
like a Cerebrus, for example, and to know that usually when there's a demonic sighting or encounter, the sulfuric smell is often accompanied by it. That's why I know what it was, that it was not from this world. I live in a small town with an even smaller population. We're pretty isolated. A lot of the locals think there's no way this could have been anything but a large animal, or something like that. But I knew better. I'd already read some cryptid stories before, and heard about the possibility of it being something else besides the usual predators. You see, something was killing the dogs. Three of them in the town so far. If it had been livestock, hell, even chickens, there would have been concern, but dogs... Man's best friend is a whole different ballgame. And these weren't your Hollywood-type chihuahua or purse pups. We're talking full-sized working dogs that could be mistaken for a wolf. So, action needed to be taken. The first two were killed in their yards. Torn, ripped apart. The third was in the nearby woods. You see, these folk were positive... Whatever creature was doing it must live in this vast expanse of woods that bordered our town. Whatever it was must live real deep into them, as nobody could think of something they'd seen or hunted, especially no dens or anything. Of course, a few men and their dogs went out to go hunting, so far deep they needed to camp out overnight. One of the men is meant to keep watch, and of course, he falls asleep. Find the dogs at his feet is no longer there. Just a bloody leash. No sign whatsoever of the dog or the predator. Nobody heard a thing. The man is enraged and also adamant that he hadn't just dozed off and the others were inclined to believe him. They grabbed their flashlights and guns and headed further, deeper into the woods, towards the caverns which had been condemned years ago due to being extremely unsafe from rock falls. They get to almost the furthest they can possibly go without risking their lives when the remaining dogs begin howling and whining, all together like some sort of wolf pack. The men can't budge. They just all stood in a circle, howling, whining, when all of a sudden, there was a noise like a crackling from one of the caves, like something snapped and those dogs ran from their owners raced all the way back to camp. The men chased the dogs, and they didn't want to stick around either. They all loaded up their stuff, and as soon as it was light enough to move out, they got out of there. Those dogs, they took, they were hunting dogs, working animals who were only afraid of their master. We're talking about bloodhounds, blue healers, German shepherds even, dogs that are designed for this, but they were all terrified. And although I wasn't part of that group of men, I know everything they saw was true. As the man that fell asleep, who said that would never happen, that was my dad. I believe everything he said. There's something deep in those dens in the caves. I know there's something, but we can't get down there. It makes me shudder to think what it could be. I was out hunting in Denton County, Texas, and I just shot a beautiful eight-point buck, was taking it back to my truck when something large, black, and large as a man, fast-moving across the path about 20 feet in front of me, leaving two gigantic blobs of mud behind it. It didn't stop running until it was out of my sight line and back behind the trees in front. I could hear it sort of panting. I had been hunting for 20 years and never seen anything like it. But I also come from a long line of hunters. And when I was a kid, my grandpappy used to tell a tale of old Lenny, a huge black creature he once mistook for a bear. Apparently, the story goes that he shot at this thing until he'd ran out of bullets. But even then, it didn't go down. It just kept running and the only evidence Grandpappy had was that it had even been there were several piles of dung. Of course, all his buddies thought he had had too much moonshine, 
but he always swore he'd find old Lenny again one day. He's long since passed, but as I quickly reloaded my shotgun, I knew I had to try and get that thing to prove to people he was telling the truth. I ran after it, into the trees where I could still hear it. It was still pretty early in the morning, roughly 6 a.m. The sun wasn't fully yet risen, so the woods were still somewhat dark, especially in the tree coverage under the canopy. But being experienced and having already bagged me a kill, I had my vision binoculars with me. I put them on, and as I ran into the trees, gun locked and loaded, and ready to shoot, I saw this thing. Now, they were an expensive piece of technology, one that had never failed me before. I enjoyed a hunt in the dark, so am fully used to them. But the strangest thing was, despite seeing that thing run into the trees and hearing it panting, the goggles didn't pick up a thing. I could hear it breathing not too far away, although it seemed to be moving again as the sounds kept coming from various directions. The goggles didn't pick up a thing. I even took them off to see if I could find the creature with my eyes rather than relying on what had to be somehow flawed technology. But it was as if this thing had just somehow blended in with the surroundings. I'm usually a patient guy, but I was all riled up. Not being to find this thing was making me mighty angry. I yelled something out at it, not expecting any kind of response since, after all, it was highly unlikely this creature could understand. But then, suddenly, it rushed me. One moment there was nothing. Next, old Lenny was about to tackle me, so I began shooting. I knew I got him at least a few times as I'm a sure shot, but much like then, I stood there for a moment, collecting myself when I noticed the same piles. Piles of feces, not mud. It had been old Lenny, at least an old Lenny Jr., but does nothing to explain why it was defecating. I've heard all nature of weird creatures, but one that defecates? What could that even be? I mean, is that usual behavior for a Bigfoot or a creature like this? I was on a camping trip with my dad. We were in the middle of nowhere, and it was pretty late at night. I awoke from a strange dream that felt very real. The sun had set, and it was very dark outside almost black, except for the bright stars that were above us. I could hear crickets chirping nearby. My dad was one of those very lucky guys who can sleep basically anywhere through anything, so he was still snoring. I considered trying to wake him for a moment, as despite knowing it had to have been a dream. I am still feeling very uneasy and unnerved. Something was off but I also felt silly for being scared from just a dream. It was pretty warm in the tent, so despite feeling anxious, I unzipped the opening, going outside. We'd set up a sort of den area just in front of the actual tent. Some camping chairs, a cooler. I sat in one of the chairs and grabbed a bottle of water, which, whilst no longer cold, was still refreshing, just to quench thirst. I was starting to feel a little better, the dream was fading, and the cool air was helping too. I just sat there, surprisingly comfortable chair, looking up at the stars, listening to my father snore, and the occasional chirps or rustling from critters and the nearby trees. Of course, the inevitable happened, and once I had finished the water, I had to pee. Despite being a couple of guys, we had standards and one of those was you don't pee close to the tent. Common decency, right? So, I grabbed the flashlight, head over to the spot we designated the John, not too far from the camp, but far enough away that it didn't stink, and we weren't likely to step in it. Of course, these things always happen mid-flow. Those feelings from after midnight came rushing back, and all of a sudden, I was filled with this inexplicable sense of dread. As soon as I stood there, shorts were on my knees. I felt something that would probably have made my bladder go loose if I hadn't already been peeing. 
a hot breath on the back of my neck, and a foul odor, like something unwashed and rotting. I felt it again, so hot and heavy. I actually felt some of the hair on my neck move, and the smell worsened. Gone off meat and unflushed toilets. And as I stood there trembling, thinking I was going to end up as something's dinner, someone's plaything, I heard my dad yell out to me. My heart leapt, and I heard a crunch behind me, like something heavy stepping on leaves and branches, as I could no longer feel the hot breath. I whipped around, the flashlight there, but nothing. I ran back to the tent, my shorts still around my ankles. These days we laugh about it, and my dad likes to remind me of how I flew embarrassingly fast into the tent, half naked and crying. Probably just suggested I scare myself. But I can't shake that feeling. Something large enough to be able to breathe onto me. Something that accompanied with the smell of death and something fast enough to disappear out of sight within seconds. There's no way I imagine that. It was roughly 1 a.m., August 21st, 2013. My buddy Joey, 24, and I were heading out to our favorite moon-watching spot in the North Main Woods. We had been to this area many times and had some weird happenings, but nothing like this encounter. It's nice out there. It's completely dark. If you ever try stargazing or moon spotting in the suburbs, you won't get to see the true beauty of the sky. All the street lights and light pollution really disguise the mood in the sky. But out there, it was total darkness. You can't even see your hand in front of your face. Not without flashlights. We'd seen lights in the sky that moved way too fast to be stars or aircraft. We'd experienced loss of time and our phones, watches, anything digital losing power, despite being fully charged. But we'd never seen anything like this. First off, we'd never actually seen another person or anything out there. It was always just us two. So we were more than surprised to see evidence that anybody else was out there. We could hear a low rumbling noise that we just could not quite place and there was definitely a light source that had never been there before. That was when we also realized we could smell smoke. The light source must have been a campfire, which was really odd. The whole time we'd been going there, since we were kids really, we'd never known of anybody camping out in that spot. It just seemed odd. We headed over to where it seemed to be coming from, and then we saw it. Now, I don't know exactly to know what we were expecting to see. Part of me thinks we want to believe I was hoping for adventure scouts. Another part knows I was secretly wishing for a UFO and little green men sitting around it. What we actually saw in many ways was even more bizarre and hard to explain. You see, there were what looked to be three figures. Two looked real tall, like maybe seven feet and the third, maybe five or so feet, smaller. They were naked as far as we could tell, and although they were partly in shadow, as the only light around them was very dim, we couldn't tell if they were male or female. To put it politely, you couldn't see any obvious parts. They seemed to be androgynous. Now, you may be wondering, couldn't we tell from their faces? Well, that was actually the weirdest part. Their heads were covered, and so far as we could tell, there wasn't even any eye holes or anything. They never moved. They were just standing there. We stood and watched them for maybe ten minutes or so, and they never moved. Never even said a thing. In the end, we were really freaked out. We just left. It was far too weird to even explain. I was living in a house with my two roommates at the time. I'd only been there for about a year. I really should have packed up my stuff and left, but I didn't know what else to do, as I could not afford to move out of state all by myself. So far, we never had any unusual experiences until this happened. My roommate would be gone 
to work all day Sunday through Wednesday, sometimes even through Thursdays. He worked from 3 p.m. till 11 p.m., seven-hour shifts. The other roommate also worked pretty much any shift he could get when he got from his regular job. But on one night, in both particular roommates, they were home sleeping together upstairs in their beds while it was very stormy outside that night, which, by the way, were also surrounded by thick, dense woods. So, the threat of having a large tree fall on us is very real. I made a habit of nervously eyeing the trees through every window of that rental. Sometimes, my roommates would make fun of me for walking around in a circle, going from room to room, craning my neck. They'd ask me what plan it was if a tree actually fell and I saw it coming. I would just tell them to shut up. But this particular storm that night, as I mentioned, was different. I felt like I couldn't see anything through the windows at night. No street lamps and no property lights of our own. If a tree was going to fall, I wouldn't be able to see it coming. I took some poor man's sleeping medicine, aka bourbon, and tried to go to sleep myself. I think I drifted off a couple of times, but the thunder sounded like it was just outside the walls, so I jumped at every single strike. Then, I became aware of another sound. At first, I thought it was my ears cobbling together, phantom sounds from the chaos of the storm. But the longer I listened, the more certain I was hearing some kind of scraping just outside the wall. Now, my bed is shoved up into a corner, and if there hadn't been a wall in the way, the source of sound would have been poking me in the eye. Well, there wasn't a window there, so I couldn't see for sure what it was. My imagination had all kinds of ideas, mostly a tree leaning as far as it possibly could before the roots fully let go and this towering trunk crushed our house. But there was no great impact, just that constant sound. The power of the storm died down just enough for me to hear this scraping even more clearly. I was beginning to get used to it and ignore it when the sound started to move. I had one wide open eye, gazing into the dark as if I could see the sound where it trailed off to. It went over to a part of the wall where my roommates were sleeping. They had windows. I did not. I was curious for my own good. Tree branches don't move like that. I made my way over to their bedroom as quietly as I could, aimed my phone's flashlight out the window before turning it on. It took half a second for what I saw to register. I was on the floor. My brain's first response was, how come I could see the face of this thing all the way up here? My rational sigh took hold of me and told me that the creature was just tall, allowing its face to be seen on the second story. It was almost funny with the way the water had matted its shaggy hair, making it look like a drowned rat. But there was nothing funny about these burning orange eyes and the flaring ape-like nostrils and what appeared to be tusks protruding from its mouth. It was like some sort of disgusting gorilla-goat hybrid or something. It was simply a demon. It gingerly ran one long claw on one digit across the side of the house, something like dumb curiosity in its eyes. My roommates tell me that I screamed and woke them up, ready to fight a war. They also say that I didn't respond for several minutes. I barely remember the experience. I just remember being more terrified than I ever had been in my entire life. I was with a friend on the road by my house, 4 a.m. in the morning. We were coming from a KFC. We drove by some houses not too far away, here in a small forested area. It has been quite recently that I've heard about this thing, but never have taken it as a big deal. But after what we saw, man, now I am so terrified of what's out there. I don't know whether to believe or not to believe. 
it has always been something interesting because whenever you see anything about Bigfoot on TV, people call them fake. Then, when they actually see one themselves, they either get killed or disappear for good. Trinidad, Texas, has its share of myths regarding these creatures known as Bigfoots here. I'm not entirely convinced they're just brute beasts. I've come to know of an Indian burial mound that hadn't been properly maintained or preserved. The wild simply overtook it, reclaiming it. Nobody knew what the area was until a number of Native American relics were found. The site also became the source of a number of tales. I've got one of my own to share. As soon as I heard about the place, I had to check it out for myself. I had hoped that I would be able to feel some sort of sacred energy. I didn't feel anything when I showed up. I thought it could have been a fluke. So, I went back the very next day. I did feel a slight down feeling, but I thought that was just me. So, I visited again. No sooner than I stepped onto whatever invisible boundary there was, my heart began to palpitate. My palms became sweaty. I basically felt like I was on the verge of a panic attack. And just like that, it was over with. I tried to will the feeling to return, but it had passed for good. It was so far out that I came back the day after that. I didn't get that overwhelming feeling again, but I saw a very tall and shaggy shape circling me behind the trees. The fur was that off-white color of a polar bear fur, but dirtier. It was to match every Bigfoot story I'd ever heard, minus the color of fur. The implications of a connection between the monster and where I was standing was far more terrifying than the beast itself. It didn't look at me like it was hungry. It looked at me like it was offended, as if trying to get through to me. I wasn't welcome. I didn't tempt fate. I did not come back after that. A few years ago, when I was about 17 or 18, a couple of friends and I were on our way to the beach for some fun and relaxation. We decided to take a different path to the beach through some deep, dense woods. We thought nothing of it, began walking down the path. As we continued to walk, my friends and I began hearing some very peculiar sounds in the distance. These were definitely not any sounds one would normally hear from animals. We didn't know what it was, but these were very scary sounds. The kind of sound that leaves you thinking twice about continuing onward down a certain path or trail through dark woods at nighttime. My friends and I cracked jokes at first, trying to make light of what we heard, as none of us knew for sure what made those terrifying noises. But eventually, our fear overtook our sense of humor, and we ultimately decided to turn back instead of proceeding on our way towards the beach. That's when the strangeness began to ramp up. The birds overhead were very active, but perfectly silent. Squirrels, chipmunks, and even raccoons sprinted around us as if they were evacuating the area. Even the crickets seemed to go quiet. The bizarre noises drew nearer, and I tried to pinpoint which direction they were coming from. It slowly dawned on me that the sounds were surrounding us. The sources had split up and closed around us. My friends must have realized the same thing. They became more agitated and were looking around like panicked animals. The police to this day doubt my story. I don't blame them. But a lack of sheer evidence seems to be the thin thread keeping me out of prison. Plus, the fact that one of the other people with us that day is now in a mental health facility. The sounds bayed and roared all around us until our nerves couldn't be any closer to the surface. A gigantic furry shape erupted from the concealing woods. You've seen the way gorillas run, right? Well, imagine a gorilla that walks and runs like a human being. A gorilla that's as tall as the surrounding trees. It didn't roar. It didn't really make any displays of aggression. It just acted swiftly, 
It ran toward us. We flinched, and it passed. And the one of us was gone. One of the girls. The tenor of the sounds changed to something like joy. Not that I'm an expert. Each time I look back on this incident, I strain to remember any sound of our friend that was snatched up. But I recall nothing. Surely she struggled or resisted just a little. Maybe she was so terrified that she fainted when she saw it coming at her. But it was on us so quickly. Investigators have found no blood, clothing, hair, or anything. It's as if she was never with us to begin. That was a possibility they considered. It's something that I try not to think about, as much as it resurfaces in my nightmares and when cryptid hunters want to chat with me. It was the summer of 2008. I was at my friend's house. We were having a campfire. We had been partying earlier in the day, but nobody had passed out yet from drinking too much alcohol. We were still up late, talking about our experiences with ghosts, aliens, Bigfoots, and other odd entities. Out of the blue, one of my friends mentioned he'd like to talk about his own encounter with a Bigfoot. Apparently, early in the year, around January or so, he and his girlfriend left out of town for a weekend camping trip. They thought it would be fun to take her pet dog along with them on their wonderful adventure. They arrived at their destination that night, after dark, so they set up their tent, pitched camp, went to bed. They woke up to the sound of a dog in distress. They had both gotten their heads out of the tent at the same time. His girlfriend passed out. He could not help but stare in horror at this monstrous ape-like creature that held the dog up in the air by one leg. Like a curious dumb child, it pulled the dog's legs off, and the sound of wet tearing muscle was as awful as the screams that the dog let out. It was clear that he was not going to be able to save this dog, so he hungered down in the tent and waited. When the thing was gone, there was only blood. He didn't know if this creature ate this dog or what, but he stared at that blood for a long time, thinking that blood could have been him had he slept outside. I don't know if he's full of crap, but he seemed pretty shaken up telling the story, like it really bothered him. He's not the type of person to make something up like this. Maybe there is more truth to his story than I realize. If so, that's incredibly disturbing, and I wish to stay far away from the woods he camped in. It was the summer of 2004. My brother, my cousin, and I were on a camping trip near an old farmhouse slash factory that has its own history. I had been there before with other people, so it wasn't anything new to me. The rest of our family went to go horseback riding, so the three of us decided to hang around the park with the forest, which was surprisingly deserted. I have to admit, it kind of was eerie how the park was so deserted. It was a hot summer's day, Fort Collins, Colorado, and there should have been a bunch of kids playing. But instead, it was just three, all aged between 15 to 17, as we were then. My mom had left us a cool bag with some ice cream, which had situated under a tree. Out of the sun, as we didn't want the lollies to melt. I walked over to get them, as we're all quenched for thirst and needed something cold and refreshing. As I walked over to this wooded area, I had the strangest feeling I was being watched. I've heard people talking of this sensation before, but no idea what it actually felt like. I could feel eyes on me, a cold stare that was tracing me up and down, left to right. I made a 360 turn to see who or what it was. My brother and cousin could sense something was wrong, so they ran over to me. They went deathly quiet, and I knew they too felt something stare. Look, my brother said, pointing in the distance, about 30 yards away. It was the strangest thing I had ever seen in my life. At first glance, it appeared to be a bear, 
which was grounds enough to be petrified. But this creature was no bear. It had the shape and form of a bear, but with brown fur. It appeared to be about 12 to 15 feet tall and came about halfway of some of the trees overhead. It had what appeared to be horns, which were strange things sticking out of its head. In fact, the horns almost seemed to kind of blend into the branches. It was kind of hard to differentiate between the two. This thing stood tall. I knew if it spotted us, we would be dead. We were terrified by seeing this thing. Thankfully, one of us was thinking straight, and my cousin grabbed me and my brother by the necks, whispering, run. As if by force, we all began running, got into the park and hid under the tire swing, at least until our parents showed up. When we told them what happened, they didn't believe us, thought we were just trying to pull a prank. But 17 years later, I know what I saw. It was real and terrifying, and I can't get that image out of my head. I never will. Believe me if you want, but there is something mysterious and terrifying that dwells deep within the forest. Maybe it's a monster, maybe it's a demon, or maybe, perhaps, it's a guardian. I don't know. This was back in September of 2007. Back then, I was 21. At the time, I lived with my two roommates at the time in a small rented house right in town. The place had a huge backyard and stretched out open into a field and the forest line past our fence. Now, me and my friends had permission from all owners to go out there and hunt occasionally. Today, I'm a proud vegan, but back then, I didn't give two craps about any animals, so I hunted when I could. On one occasion, in September, myself and my buddy went hunting for some deer, whatever we could find. And dating apps were just new, so we wanted some cool pictures of ourselves with guns to impress the girls around here. I look back on it and I know, the thought is pretty cringy, but we were young. Whether or not we would find any deer was another issue. Even typing this sends shivers down my spine because ultimately, I recall the incident. My buddy had just went to go pee and I was sitting playing a game called Snake on my flip phone. I felt so bad with that phone. It's laughable now. My buddy was away for what seemed to be a long time, longer than it takes anybody to pee. I got worried. The next thing I heard was my buddy screaming in what sounded like agony. I ran in an effort to find him, and when I did, he was on the ground with a bloody wound on his leg. He was pointing to his right, and when I looked, I stopped dead at what was before me. It appeared to be a hyena looking like creature, with this leathery red raw dripping bits of flesh from its mouth. It was disgusting looking. Its nose and face seemed to be smashed in, but it looked wrong in every sense of the way. The creature spotted me and began to run at the speed of lightning. As if by divine intervention, I managed to grab my gun, pulling the trigger, maiming this thing in the spinal cord which jutted out of its emaciated frame. It did not die, but it bled profusely and ran. I lifted my buddy up and dragged him along the forest floor until we got home. When we told the hospital what had happened, they didn't believe us, but we thought we were just some drugged up college kids. But we both know what happened and will never forget what happened on that day back in September of 2007. Since then, I've heard of people mentioning the phrase dogmen, but I don't know. I guess I have heard some reports of hyena-like creatures that are bipedal. And I guess if I think back on it, that could have been it. But I don't know. The idea of a dogman seems crazy, but so is what we saw. I guess I'll let you be the judge on this one. It was around 10 p.m. in the evening. The day had been cloudy and rainy, and it stayed that way for most of the night. Earlier that night, 
Me and my girlfriend at the time were playing Super Mario Sunshine on our GameCube until we began hearing heavy rainfall outside. Because of this, the both of us decided to go for a walk in the rain. I know it sounds weird, but this was in southern Spain, and we just don't get heavy showers that often. So we put on our raincoats and our wellies and got an umbrella. It looked quite romantic out, and it was still relatively bright as it was summer. My then-girlfriend was wearing a white rain jacket as we left our house and headed to a local park. This was surrounded by the most gorgeous woodland. What was strange was that as we were walking, moths and flies kept flocking to my girlfriend and her rain jacket and her hair. She was getting very annoyed, ready to turn back home. But luckily, I had some anti-pest spray and tried my best to help. We kept walking, and as we walked into this woodland area, we stopped under a tree. We kissed. The kiss was short-lived, however, as we both heard a yelp and a growl and witnessed something terrifying. In what appeared to be a horse, which was strange-looking, mangy and disgusting, appeared to have what looked like rotting flesh, gray and pale, and a maniacal expression. This was like a horse from hell. I know it sounds ridiculous, but how else do I even describe it? I grabbed my girlfriend, keeping her from moving, and we both stood there behind the tree, shaking. I had actually ended up biting her, and she was bleeding. I wondered if this crazed thing could smell the blood. I felt terrified. Eventually, this thing backed away, but I knew it was circling around us, keeping watch of us. And we witnessed that it had appeared to kill a deer, which was lying maimed and decimated on the forest floor near us. We both briskly walked back home, sincerely regretted ever leaving the house. And not long after, we both kept fighting and blaming each other for going on the walk. We couldn't cope with the horror of what we had seen and we both felt we were going crazy. We ended up going our separate ways. That was 19 years ago. I often think about the incident of Rosa and I to this day. I might try and reach out to her so we could both talk about it again. I feel we both need counseling as we witnessed something from hell. Something that destroyed our relationship and made us afraid of everything. I hope by submitting this story... I can find other people who may have witnessed similar events and experiences can maybe point me in the right direction. It is my hope that I can join some type of support group for people who have PTSD after seeing strange and terrifying creatures that society, the world, and everybody claims over and over that do not exist. At the age of 10, my family and I took a vacation down to Wilson's Creek National Battlefield in Missouri. Now, this was a pretty cool place for us. Most of the battlefield is covered by dense forest. We camped out of the park for two nights straight with very little rain. But it did start raining on our second night there. There is some light thunder and lightning. My parents were experienced at camping, so they didn't take much notice but instead told us some ghost stories from the comforts of our tent. When the storm had calmed, my parents went back to their tent, left me and my younger brother in ours. My younger brother slept soundly very quickly, but I was still freaked out by the thunder and hoped it would not start again. I guess I wasn't a camping kid as I freaked out about any deers, bugs, bears, or anything finding its way to our camping site. I could even hear a rustling sound just outside of our tent, and my blood went cold. I felt nauseous, wanting to call out for my parents, but my voice could not leave my body. So, very carefully, I unzipped the opening of our tent, just about five or so inches, and I looked out to see what was rustling outside. I still remember, 40 years later, the terror I felt when I saw what was lurking just outside. It was some type of wild dog, 
but most horribly, it had three heads, like a cerebrus. It was like a thing from hell. It was black and had glowing red eyes. It was terrifying. I promise this is the only thing I could think of as a cerebrus. My eyes were glued to this thing as it began walking around, sniffing. This thing was massive, and the odor of sulfur filled my nostrils. I knew this was something not right. What was striking is its face. It looked all sorts of wrong. This was no normal animal, my friends. This was something else entirely. This being did not belong on this mortal plane. I just closed my eyes and begged God to cause me to pass out. I watched this thing walk around for about a half an hour. It could have been longer. But then, I never see it leave. It just kind of disappeared. I didn't sleep a wink that night, and the sulfuric smell still filled the campsite. That didn't really dissipate for a while. When sunrise came, I was so glad to go and wake my parents. Of course, they said it was a bad dream, and the smell had dissipated by then. They told me this nightmare was childish and delusional. But 40 years ago now, 40 years, I'm confident by what I saw. At the time, I didn't know it was a cerebrus. I didn't know what it was. But as I got older, and my interest in the paranormal and cryptozoology grew and deepened, I learned more about the various kinds of creatures and demons, like a cerebrus, for example, and to know that usually when there's a demonic sighting or encounter, the sulfuric smell is often accompanied by it. That's why I know what it was, that it was not from this world. I live in a small town with an even smaller population. We're pretty isolated. A lot of the locals think there's no way this could have been anything but a large animal, or something like that. But I knew better. I'd already read some cryptid stories before, and heard about the possibility of it being something else besides the usual predators. You see, something was killing the dogs. Three of them in the town so far. If it had been livestock, hell, even chickens, there would have been concern, but dogs? Man's best friend is a whole different ballgame. And these weren't your Hollywood-type chihuahua or purse pups. We're talking full-sized working dogs that could be mistaken for a wolf. So, action needed to be taken. The first two were killed in their yards. Torn, ripped apart. The third was in the nearby woods. You see, these folk were positive Whatever creature was doing it must live in this vast expanse of woods that bordered our town. Whatever it was must live real deep into them, as nobody could think of something they'd seen or hunted, especially no dens or anything. Of course, a few men and their dogs went out to go hunting, so far deep they needed to camp out overnight. One of the men is meant to keep watch, and of course, he falls asleep. Find the dogs at his feet is no longer there. Just a bloody leash. No sign whatsoever of the dog or the predator. Nobody heard a thing. The man is enraged and also adamant that he hadn't just dozed off and the others were inclined to believe him. They grabbed their flashlights and guns and headed further, deeper into the woods, towards the caverns which had been condemned years ago due to being extremely unsafe from rock falls. They get to almost the furthest they can possibly go without risking their lives when the remaining dogs begin howling and whining. All together, like some sort of wolf pack. The men can't budge. They just all stood in a circle, howling, whining, when all of a sudden, there was a noise like a crackling from one of the caves, like something snapped and those dogs ran from their owners raced all the way back to camp. The men chased the dogs, and they didn't want to stick around either. They all loaded up their stuff, and as soon as it was light enough to move out, they got out of there. Those dogs, they took, they were hunting dogs, working animals who were only afraid of their master. We're talking about bloodhounds, blue healers, 
German Shepherds even. Dogs that are designed for this. But they were all terrified. And although I wasn't part of that group of men, I know everything they saw was true. As the man that fell asleep, who said that would never happen? That was my dad. I believe everything he said. There's something deep in those dens in the caves. I know there's something, but we can't get down there. It makes me shudder to think what it could be. I was out hunting in Denton County, Texas, and I just shot a beautiful eight-point buck. Was taking it back to my truck when something large, black, and large as a man, fast-moving across the path about 20 feet in front of me, leaving two gigantic blobs of mud behind it. It didn't stop running until it was out of my sight line and back behind the trees in front. I could hear it sort of panting. I'd been hunting for 20 years and never seen anything like it. But I also come from a long line of hunters, and when I was a kid, my grandpappy used to tell a tale of old Lenny, a huge black creature he once mistook for a bear. Apparently, the story goes that he shot at this thing until he'd ran out of bullets. But even then, it didn't go down. It just kept running. And the only evidence Grandpappy had was that it had even been there were several piles of dung. Of course, all his buddies thought he had had too much moonshine. But he always swore he'd find old Lenny again one day. He's long since passed, but as I quickly reloaded my shotgun, I knew I had to try and get that thing to prove to people he was telling the truth. I ran after it into the trees where I could still hear it. It was still pretty early in the morning, roughly 6 a.m. The sun wasn't fully yet risen, so the woods were still somewhat dark, especially in the tree coverage under the canopy. But being experienced and having already bagged me a kill, I had my vision binoculars with me. I put them on, and as I ran into the trees, gun locked and loaded, and ready to shoot, I saw this thing. Now, they were an expensive piece of technology, one that had never failed me before. I enjoyed a hunt in the dark, so am fully used to them. But the strangest thing was, despite seeing that thing run into the trees and hearing it panting, the goggles didn't pick up a thing. I could hear it breathing not too far away, although it seemed to be moving again as the sounds kept coming from various directions. The goggles didn't pick up a thing. I even took them off to see if I could find the creature with my eyes rather than relying on what had to be somehow flawed technology. But it was as if this thing had just somehow blended in with the surroundings. I'm usually a patient guy, but I was all riled up. Not being to find this thing was making me mighty angry. I yelled something out at it, not expecting any kind of response since, after all, it was highly unlikely this creature could understand. But then, suddenly, it rushed me. One moment there was nothing. Next, old Lenny was about to tackle me, so I began shooting. I knew I got him at least a few times as I'm a sure shot, but much like then, I stood there for a moment, collecting myself when I noticed the same piles. The piles of feces, not mud. It had been old Lenny, at least an old Lenny Jr., but does nothing to explain why it was defecating. I've heard all nature of weird creatures, but one that defecates? What could that even be? I mean, is that usual behavior for a Bigfoot or a creature like this? I was on a camping trip with my dad. We were in the middle of nowhere, and it was pretty late at night. I awoke from a strange dream that felt very real. The sun had set, and it was very dark outside. Almost black, except for the bright stars that were above us. I could hear crickets chirping nearby. My dad was one of those very lucky guys who can sleep basically anywhere through anything, so he was still snoring. I considered trying to wake him for a moment 
as despite knowing it had to have been a dream. I am still feeling very uneasy and unnerved. Something was off. But I also felt silly for being scared from just a dream. It was pretty warm in the tent, so despite feeling anxious, I unzipped the opening, going outside. We'd set up a sort of den area just in front of the actual tent. Some camping chairs, a cooler. I sat in one of the chairs and grabbed a bottle of water, which, whilst no longer cold, was still refreshing, just to quench thirst. I was starting to feel a little better. The dream was fading, and the cool air was helping too. I just sat there, surprisingly comfortable chair, looking up at the stars, listening to my father's snore, and the occasional chirps or rustling from critters and the nearby trees. Of course, the inevitable happened, and once I had finished the water, I had to pee. Despite being a couple of guys, we had standards, and one of those was you don't pee close to the tent. Common decency, right? So, I grab the flashlight, head over to the spot we designated the John, not too far from the camp, but far enough away that it didn't stink, and we weren't likely to step in it. Of course, these things always happen mid-flow. Those feelings from after midnight came rushing back, and all of a sudden, I was filled with this inexplicable sense of dread. As soon as I stood there, shorts were on my knees. I felt something that would probably have made my bladder go loose if I hadn't already been peeing. A hot breath on the back of my neck, and a foul odor, like something unwashed and rotting. I felt it again, so hot and heavy. I actually felt some of the hair on my neck move, and the smell worsened. Gone off meat and unflushed toilets. And as I stood there trembling, thinking I was going to end up as something's dinner, someone's plaything, I heard my dad yell out to me. My heart leapt, and I heard a crunch behind me, like something heavy stepping on leaves and branches, as I could no longer feel the hot breath. I whipped around, the flashlight there, but nothing. I ran back to the tent, my shorts still around my ankles. These days we laugh about it, and my dad likes to remind me of how I flew embarrassingly fast into the tent, half naked and crying. Probably just suggested I scare myself. But I can't shake that feeling. Something large enough to be able to breathe onto me. Something that accompanied with the smell of death and something fast enough to disappear out of sight within seconds. There's no way I imagine that. It was roughly 1 a.m., August 21st, 2013. My buddy Joey, 24, and I were heading out to our favorite moon-watching spot in the North Main Woods. We had been to this area many times and had some weird happenings, but nothing like this encounter. It's nice out there. It's completely dark. If you ever try stargazing or moon spotting in the suburbs, you won't get to see the true beauty of the sky. All the street lights and light pollution really disguise the moon in the sky. But out there, it was total darkness. You can't even see your hand in front of your face. Not without flashlights. We'd seen lights in the sky that moved way too fast to be stars or aircraft. We'd experienced loss of time and our phones, watches, anything digital losing power, despite being fully charged. But we'd never seen anything like this. First off, we'd never actually seen another person or anything out there. It was always just us two. So, we were more than surprised to see evidence that anybody else was out there. We could hear a low rumbling noise that we just could not quite place and there was definitely a light source that had never been there before. That was when we also realized we could smell smoke. The light source must have been a campfire, which was really odd. The whole time we'd been going there, since we were kids really, we'd never known of anybody camping out in that spot. It just seemed odd. We headed over to where it seemed to be coming from, and then we saw it. Now, I don't know exactly to know what we were expecting to see. Part of me thinks we want to believe I was hoping for adventure scouts. Another part knows 
I was secretly wishing for a UFO and little green men sitting around it. What we actually saw in many ways was even more bizarre and hard to explain. You see, there were what looked to be three figures. Two looked real tall, like maybe seven feet, and the third maybe five or so feet, smaller. They were naked as far as we could tell, and although they were partly in shadow, as the only light around them was very dim, we couldn't tell if they were male or female. To put it politely, you couldn't see any obvious parts. They seemed to be androgynous. Now, you may be wondering, couldn't we tell from their faces? Well, that was actually the weirdest part. Their heads were covered, and so far as we could tell, there wasn't even any eye holes or anything. They never moved. They were just standing there. We stood and watched them for maybe 10 minutes or so, and they never moved. Never even said a thing. In the end, we were really freaked out. We just left. It was far too weird to even explain. I am writing this from Atlanta, Georgia. Myself and my mother had a very unusual experience last February 2020, right before COVID hit. We were going wedding dress shopping in a town nearby. It was a cool day, the perfect temperature for a girl's day out, despite it being in winter. We had a full day planned, champagne, cocktails, lots of treats, but Something happened that has compelled me to put pen to paper, so to speak. To make sense of something gruesome and deadly that tarnished what should have been one of the best days I've had. I just tried on my wedding dress and had it all picked out. My mother and I were leaving the shop feeling blissful. Everything was working out. That's when we noticed this awful burning smell, like sulfur. It was a cold day, so the smell was very out of place and very unusual. When we looked behind us, we saw nothing, so we kept on walking. However, when we got to the car, we both noticed the smell had gotten much worse. I checked to see my tires and everything all seemed fine. The next thing I heard was my mother screaming. She grabbed onto me. Behind us was a terrifying creature, such that I had never seen before. It was serpentine in appearance, maybe about eight feet long. But instead of the unusual patterned snake, which I was accustomed to seeing, this thing was red, like it had been skinned. It was repulsive. In addition to that, this thing had long protrusions sticking out of its head. It appeared to have multiple sets of teeth or fang-like protrusions sticking out of its mouth. The creature was moving around in circles around the parking lot, coming out of the nearby woods, apparently stopping and smelling the ground. The next thing I heard my mother was retching behind the car, wailing, evidently horrified by the sight. I dropped my dress on the ground and Beast slithered up right next to it. It moved the dress leaving a stain. Eventually, I don't know if this was a snake or what, but I'll call it a snake for the continuity of the story. It left us both dumbfounded, confused, and completely terrified. We got into the car immediately, calling the cops. They got there and the cop was drinking coffee, asked if we had smoked any weed. He was definitely a very staunch individual, blamed it all on the weed even though we hadn't had any and didn't even smoke. We told them we had saw this thing and felt lucky to be alive. We were both terrified for anyone else who came across it. Especially, right around where it went back into in the woods was this patch of field where there were more houses. We both felt like this thing could be a danger if anybody else ran into it. I even showed him my wedding dress and the blood mark, but he just dismissed it. Needless to say, we went home deeply agitated and distressed. Obviously, I didn't wear that dress and couldn't get my money back either, as it was badly damaged. I burned it, hoping that the ritual would burn the memory right out of my head. But it didn't, and it hasn't. 
I know it's probably extreme of me to do that, but this sighting affected me. The creature and the experience still very much haunt my memory to this day, and I often have nightmares of visions of its sleeping in wake hours. It's unbearable. I'm also carrying a child now, and have no idea how traumatic this memory is, how it could be affecting my unborn child. The only thing I know of that I've heard is that the smell of sulfur is often accompanied with the sighting of demons. Did I see a real-life demon? I don't know. But I beg you, if you have any information on what this creature is or has been, please get in touch. I am putting together a strong case and submitting it. I hope that this matter will be investigated thoroughly and maybe will be solved eventually. Anyway, I still have sleepless nights and often feel overwhelmed by the sheer memory. I hope I can one day heal and get better. I do not want to live in a world where such creatures exist and haunt my memory. For the sake of my child, I will fight this creature until it is found. I beg anyone who reads this and encounters something similar to come forward. It was 1972, and I was on a field trip with some fellow classmates. Being only 18 then, and thought I knew everything. This was in Denver, Colorado. A lot of forestry. Plenty of room to do whatever we wanted. At night, when the teachers and the rest of everybody else was asleep, a few of us seniors would go to a quiet space and smoke weed. On this one night, it was just me and my friend Margaret and her boyfriend. We were talking about the latest music, and at the time, glam rock was just a booming thing. It was an exciting time to be young. Style was everything, and expressing who you were individually was an art, more so than today. No longer did we feel the need to be shamed or be like everybody else. Well, as it happens on this one night, we saw something very strange in the woods. We were walking, I would say briskly, back to the camp after our hash, when we saw what appeared to be a scarecrow hanging from the trees above us. It was pretty freaky, and might I add disturbing. It was around the same time the Manson family and I feared that some crazy commune or cult we're going to jump out and attack. But we still kept still, just watching. It was dressed like a man and was most definitely a scarecrow. Its face, though, was painted like a clown. And it had the face of a clown that would visit a kid's birthday. That made the sight even more disturbing. I felt sick and grabbed Margaret and James, her boyfriend, tried to get them to go back to camp. They just stood transfixed. Something terrifying then happened. The creature moved its head down, stared down at us, with its clown-like face, smiled and laughed at us. It was a menacing, cold laugh, one that seemed to send hair on our bodies upward in shock and terror. We all screamed and were spooked. We went and ran, but when we did, we found we hit a dead end. The creature did a 360 turn and was now staring at us again, laughing. Now it began to turn into more of a shadow. We turned again and found ourselves at yet another dead end. This is it. We were going to die here by this horror. I didn't know what to do or where to hide. There were no cell phones at the time anyway, so no teacher or parent or officer could ever be contacted. We felt so helpless. We kept running, and luckily this time made it to our camp, where everybody was fast asleep. Not sure if it was a bad trip or if we had actually seen what we saw, but in the morning, we all agreed that it was real, and we had seen something dreadful and horrific. We all agreed not to tell anybody, as they would either think we were drug crazed or crazy, and we were all on the verge of going to college. We didn't need any bad rap. But that experience changed us. We could no longer be around each other. That memory of the incident was written across all of our faces. I truly believe we experienced something paranormal out in those woods. It's been nearly 50 years now, and I still can't look at a scarecrow or a clown to this day. 
some things are just not the same anymore. I wonder if I was crazy or if this was a bad trip, but I hope one day I'll find answers, before I die, about what it was. Maybe, just maybe, it's still out there. I'm not sure I can ever forget that night, even though it was over 20 years ago. I was at college in Liverpool, England. I was walking home from my part-time job at the coffee shop. The night was still and I felt so grateful to have a job that could make me self-sufficient and look after myself. No one was going to tell me otherwise. I mean, my job was awesome. I loved being a barista. As I was walking home, I went to call my then boyfriend to tell him to put on some dinner for me. Cell phones were pretty much just out and my phone then was this huge clunky thing didn't have much battery or network. I wasn't surprised then when it didn't reach him, so I just shrugged it off and kept walking. My usual walk home was through residential streets. Usually, they were abuzz with activity as they were student housing. But on this night, all seemed deathly still. I remember laughing a bit thinking it was some weird apocalypse movie. I thought of a joke to tell my boyfriend. I felt like a proper white girl in a horror movie walking home. Although, I had gotten used to walking everywhere by myself, I wasn't freaked out or anything. As I turned to go on one of the roads, I realized it was closed as there had been some major cracks in the road's surface. I heard whispers of something odd happening during the night, and residents had awoke to a screeching, screaming sound, only to find a huge hole in the residential street. I remapped my route and just went an alternative one. This route was a little darker, so I decided to walk more briskly. When I was about halfway up this path, which I was surrounded by woodland and foliage, I heard something. Now, this something was whimpering all the way to my right. I had a fear it was a child or dog, so I looked over instinctively. However, it was no child or dog but rather something unlike anything I'd ever seen in my life. It was a creature, about the size of a dog, but with no fur or skin. Rather disgusting looking. Its legs were small and webbed, and it looked like it had no idea how to move. And then, to answer my questions, I see this large thing pulling out of its head, and as this thing moved along, it kind of moved all around. I know it's hard to explain, but it moved kind of like it glided. I had the impression it could even fly had it moved right. Its face was disturbing, kind of mashed in with dead skin, dark, large black eyes, and its mouth opened to reveal a lizardish mouth, small fangs, and large cave-like opening for food. I had watched enough nature documentaries to know the damage this creature could do with just a small amount of bite not taking my eyes away from this strange creature. Eventually, I got away. I still remember this incident to this day and have never really forgotten it. I feel grateful to be alive and wonder what could have happened often. Not many people believed me when I told them about my experience. I know it's true. <laughs> 